Nigeria's president, Muhammad Buhari, recently joined other African leaders in Beijing, China, for the Forum on China-Africa Cooperation, FOCAC. The essence was to collaborate with global counterparts towards charting a new course for China-Africa relations. But before then, the federal government played host to two prominent world leaders, Theresa May, the United Kingdom's Prime Minister, and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. Now, top on the agenda of their visits, our security and the issue of strengthening economic ties with Nigeria. Both heads of government showed up with strong business delegations to explore investment opportunities. This edition of Business 24 focuses on the opportunities available for the Nigerian economy from the recent bilateral engagements. What were the business deals signed and their volumes? value, significance, and areas of focus. These are some questions that will be answered in this edition of your weekly magazine program, Business 24. All these and more you get to find out if you stay with us. I am Leah Katun, Baba Tunde, your anchor for this week. Now, also on our lineup are the regulars moving Nigeria beyond oil, a review of the capital market, export tips from our in-house expert Femi Boyedi, and of course the entrepreneur for the week and the CEO. All this will come your way if you stay tuned. Now thanks for staying with us. The Nigerian government within the past three years have signed various bilateral agreements with different countries with the aim of deepening and strengthening the Nigerian economy so as to restore its place in the international community and also to build a long-lasting business relationship with different economies of the world. Now, just recently, President Muhammad Buhari signed a bilateral agreement with the People's Republic of China at the just-concluded Forum on China-Africa in Beijing. Comfort Amadou in this report takes a look at how these agreements can translate into meaningful developments. Making Nigeria's economy one of the fastest growing economies in the world with a GDP growth averaging 10% annually and economic stability for ECOWAS nations maintaining a strong close and frank relations with west africa and other developed nations those are some of president Muhammad buhari's campaign promises to nigerians when he took over leadership of the country in 2015. to achieve this his government has within the last three years entered into partnership with different nations of the world to revive the nation's economy and change its trajectory the federal government's strategic partnership with developed countries has maintained a steady progress considering frequent bilateral economic trade exchanges, like the currency swap deal agreement signed earlier this year by the Central Bank of Nigeria, valued at $2.5 billion with the People's Republic of China. For instance, President Mahmoud Buhari mentioned to Xi Jinping, President of China, at the just concluded FOCA conference in Beijing that Nigeria has executed key infrastructure projects across the country valued at more than $5 billion within the last three years through the existing partnership between Nigeria and China. The president also made was um, that we wanted to see uh, duty waivers uh, for our agricultural products coming into the Chinese market, like sesame and, uh, and others. And um, this point was also well taken. Well, not just to help the important to buy from the factory directly with the cheap price, but also we can help the exporter to we can help them to export to China with our platform. To make sure that strategically we are also seeking out the kind of opportunities, the kind of investors in China that we want, rather than just those that want to come to Nigeria. China has, however, made a financial commitment of $60 billion for infrastructure development in Africa, while Nigeria is looking to see how this will be beneficial to the economy, bearing in mind a huge existing infrastructure deficit in the African's most populous nation. My sense is that like, it's really one of consolidation. You know, we were careful not to focus so much on new things as much as reaffirming and reinforcing 
you know, the various projects we're working with them already on, whether it's around the rail or around power or around roads, as well as some of the other things that relate to human capacity building. So the key challenge in, you know, after signing agreements is to ensure that the terms for the, to, to ensure that the money can be recovered are met. Um, the feasibility studies will now be, you know, thoroughly scrutinized to make sure that the Product, the projects are really feasible. Other agreements signed between Nigeria and China under the Belt and Road Initiative to build greater collaboration in Nigeria's drive for economic and infrastructure development, a framework agreement on the provision of concessionary loans from the Chinese government. This is seen by delegates as capable of pushing for greater African integration and put the country on a sustainable growth trajectory. We signed a cooperation agreement for concessional financing um, for the rollout of ICT infrastructure for $328 million. Uh, so basically what it means is that we're able to get a low-cost loan to roll out uh, better IT infrastructure. President Mahmoud Buhari also appealed to the Chinese President Xi Jinping to aid in the completion of the Mambila hydropower project, which he says is of key priority. To Nigeria. Delegates are optimistic that the partnership entered into will deepen relations between Nigeria and China. For Business 24, I'm Comfort Amadou. These agreements, when they fully take off, of course, will no doubt contribute in balancing bilateral trade relations between China and Africa. Now, the business community in Nigeria is basking in the euphoria of stronger foreign policy direction and engagement. Europe came calling recently, and Joy Uzo in this report situates the visit of the British Prime Minister and, of course, the German Chancellor, Angela Merkel. Britain is Nigeria's oldest trading partner. It explains the high volume of trade between both countries. Though current trade statistics show UK is out of the top five trade partners to Nigeria, the volume of trade is still very significant. As Britain prepares to finally exit the Eurozone, forging stronger ties and new engagements is now very necessary. This explains the visit to three nations in Africa by the British Prime Minister Theresa May late August with a strong business delegation. The team was in Nigeria, South Africa and Kenya. All Commonwealth members are economic powers on the continent. Although not in the Brexit kind of way, Angela Merkel's mission shares similar undertone. They are also here because for the first time, I, I would add, a proper and comprehensive infrastructure for the conduct and management of trade policy uh, is being put in place. As you know, we have um, a directive from the Federal Executive Council uh, to prepare a 21st trade policy for Nigeria. Secondly, as you know as well, our president has, uh, was in the month of July uh, elected as uh, chairman of the economic community of West African states, a position of leadership for uh, interalia deepening trade integration um, here in the West African sub-region. So there's a lot that's going on that's, um, that's well regarded. We're setting up our trade remedies infrastructure. For us as a nation, there are certain kinds of technology that we can't, um, we can't fabricate or get locally without having the support of you know foreign technical partners to help support even in the agro business that we're trying to diversify the economy to we still need support from the United Kingdom so we have achieved quite a lot you know because I mean when it comes to education with you know a lot of out of every out of every 1,000 Nigerian, you find one that have actually school in the UK. So, I mean, there are lots of things we have benefited from the United Kingdom. But having said that, I still think that we as a people still need to do, it, do what I call deep thinking on how to take advantage of the current political state of the United Kingdom. Because at every point in time, whether you like it or not, 
every success you see in every economy is an advantage taken on other economies. So if with the Brexit, the Brexit in the UK, with, that, with what is happening in the UK now, the, the United Kingdom, they, they want to build new alliances with other countries in the world because they need to sustain their economy. So it, it's about time we begin to take advantage of such such openings to see how you to see how we can best you know benefit from every relationship that we're going to go into with a clear understanding of the implication of the visits to the economy experts are urging policymakers to make judicious use of the opportunities these developments signify meanwhile the import of this is not lost to the british prime minister who during a tour in africa spotted a jacket made from the hand-woven Akwate fabric of the Akwate people of Abia State, Southeast Nigeria. The designer, Emi Kasbit, is a Lagos Fashion Week Fund beneficiary. For players in the fashion industry, this patronage by the British Prime Minister is seen as very encouraging, particularly as the UK is known for high taste. A player in the industry who spoke with Business24 says it will strengthen the capacity of the apparel and garment sector for exports. A very great impact in the sense that there is transaction going on between the Nigerian fashion industry and those abroad not just narrow to Nigerians abroad including the whites out there there is this joy in fitting in an Akara outfit and he shows that our creativity has gone far so for the fashion industry is a niche for everyone in the industry because globally now Nigeria made wares from locally made material will be sourced for. And one great problem we have is quality. That's why you still find us going outside the country to source for materials, raw materials. But if we can get that done in this country, I think we'll go far. Aside strengthening economic ties, further cooperation on piracy, organized crime and human trafficking, including a new task force to help Nigeria recover stolen assets held in the UK was announced by President Muhammad Buhari. Nigeria's top export to the UK is crude oil, and its largest import is refined oil. And for Germany, the relationship is mutual. For Business 24, I am Joy Uzo. With these economic ties, predictions of friendlier business environment is gradually becoming feasible, more so with Brexit opening opportunities for emerging economies like Nigeria. Our feedback medium is open for your opinion, suggestions and questions. Now moving on for any entity to stand at par with world-class institutions or companies, it must strive to ensure excellent service delivery, provide value-added customer services for long-lasting business relationships. Now take, this takes us to our next report. Mohammed Jamal is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer 3M Plus Construction Company and he is our CEO of the week. He says he is determined to be Nigeria's foremost engineering, construction and project management household name. The building and construction industry has been relevant in development of the Nigerian economy. Roads and housing are major components of the building and construction subsector. This sector has over the years provided employment for different categories of employees. These include the Federal Capital Territory, FCT Abuja, the various state capital cities like Lagos, Potakot, Ibadan, Kaduna, Kano, among others. The sector is also pivotal in sectoral linkage as its activities have multiplied effect on the growth of other sectors, especially the building materials industry, real estate, among others. 
More importantly, the drive towards achieving the goal and objectives of the Nigerian Vision 2020 blueprint is anchored on quality of constructions. Consequently, some individuals and companies have been making giant strides towards the realization of this set goal. One of such companies is 3M Plus, construction company Abuja. Literally, we wanted to focus on um, the road side of uh, infrastructure side of uh, construction because we noticed a lot of housing um, estates coming up we noticed uh, a lot of buildings but we noticed that there were not that many indigenous companies and Nigerian companies that focused on roads and we felt like that would be let's let's use that as our focus and um, I had gotten a lot of experience from my dad who also has a construction company 3M Plus Construction, founded by a team of Nigerian and expatriate professionals, is supported and well managed by a finance and administration team. In the FCT, you can see both um, our construction and our properties um, companies. We've, we've, we've done a lot um, here. You can talk about the Kwagwagalada National Housing Program, were the ones that did the infrastructure there, and um, Karu Federal Housing. Uh, were the ones that did the road there. We've also done the um, projects, some projects in Kuche. I mean, there are quite a lot of projects in Abuja that we've done, and um, so literally all over, all over the country, to be honest, Port Harcourt. So yeah. The outstanding growth of three M Plus construction company within the space of four years can be attributed to the business mode, which is anchored on standard, strong culture, competence, and skill workforce. The indigenous company is focused on developing the environment and infrastructure through expertise and provision of value-added services to its growing clientele across Nigeria. Our profit margin is very low and the reason that we do that is because we want to attract more and more customers towards us and so we try and do it at literally a very very low profit margin and at the end of the day, we want people to see what we can do and making sure that, you know, we, we, our quality and our prices are both, you know, really, really good. And that's, that's where our focus has been. For 3M Plus Construction Company, one thing that is paramount is empowerment. So about employment, you know, it's really, it's, it's really crazy. Over the, past, um, over the past two years, my company went from what well, literally almost employing almost under 10 people and today we manage you know professions the carpenters that you pay on a daily basis um the masons all those ones you know apart from those you know we literally pay over 100 people every month the managing director and chief executive officer mohammed jamal says managing a company of such magnitude it's not always rosy. Sometimes you get a project of, you know, a few millions and you need to use your money to do that project before you get paid, um, both governments and both uh, individuals. So literally, your, your cash is, is trapped in um, projects that you do because it takes a, a bit of time. So those kind of projects that we focus on can take months, can take years. So most of your capital is stuck there until you're able to finish that project and get paid. 3M Plus Company is striving to attain international standards of excellence and be a premier player in the local construction industry. There you have it, our CEO of the week, MD CEO 3M Plus Construction Company, Abuja. Now before we move to the next report, which you will get to find out if you stay tuned, let's quickly take those export tips from our in-house expert, Femi Boyedi. Again, we're talking about quality. Ghana for illustration, has been able to carve a niche for itself in the export of 
let's even not say garments completely, let's say they are kente tops. And so you go abroad, um, somebody sees you wearing um, a flurry wooden uh, top or something, they immediately begin to imagine that you are from Ghana. You have to tell them, oh no, this was made in Nigeria. And for that matter, why do our women travel all the way to Senegal and Gambia to go and make dresses that they come to sell to our um, national assemblies and other big men? Because there is a particular way that um, these dresses are finished in the, their countries, deemed as their countries of origin. Therefore, there you have it, quality and very uh, serious attention to quality details is very key, a very key ingredient of the export value chain. And to our entrepreneur of the week, Business 24 sits with a photographer whose talent stands him out in the business of photography. Ronami Egirani is our guide on that one. Welcome to this week's edition of Young Entrepreneur. My name is Rana Miyagirani, and today we catch up with Henry Ojimadu-Weze, a.k.a. Big H of Big H Studios. Photography in Nigeria today has become larger than life, with popular photographers like Kelechi Amadiobi, Obi Somto, and T.Y. Bello, amongst others, who have created a path to success and blazed the trail for people like Henry Ojimadu-Weze to follow. But in order to achieve that great success, creativity, passion, and drive are a key ingredient. Um, my journey to photography is a funny one. I bought my first camera when I traveled um, around 2011, December 19th, to be precise. Uh, then I came back and photographed a friend's wedding. I was just doing it for free. And um, I think I picked interest around April um, 2012. And since then, I've been shooting and practicing. I didn't really know what to expect. So I can't really say that I had somebody who really, really influenced me to go into photography. I didn't even know what an iconic photographer looked like. I didn't even know. I just thought photography was just take camera and then take picture. Photography isn't just any other thing to do. Is, is something that involves your creative eye. It's something that takes a lot from you. So the first thing that I would say, and I think the absolute important thing, is that that person should be absolutely passionate about it. Because there will be times that you want to give up. And it is that passion that will keep you, that drive. In an industry with already established major players, Henry has never given up. He has managed to rise above his challenges to get clients to trust him and people to appreciate his work. Being that new guy, that new kid on the block, um, getting people to appreciate your work and also trust you, that was a major challenge. You understand? You, you have to tell people so many times, Madam, don't worry, I can do this for you. Okay, okay, don't worry, I'll do it for free. You understand? Oh, don't worry, just pay me this amount of money. You know, you, you, we needed to follow people up. Many jobs that we did, we didn't get paid for them. Breaking into that, you know, an industry that already had leaders, Obi Sumto, Kelechi Amadi, T.Y. Bello, Hakim, Musa Musa. You know, but the great thing about the Nigerian photography industry is that right now, there are a lot of people. There's Eleanor, there's Tokpe, there's um, Imano Yeleke, Prince Mason, Berge, you know, so... George Okoro, there's so many people that are just doing um, great work. I think it's even going to be tougher for anybody now who wants to start photography because you have to look at all these people that I've mentioned then. It was just maybe, what, five, six people that you had to think of. The photography industry has seen its fair share of dazzling young talent and Henry can stand tall amongst the brightest of them. But amidst all this success, he remains humble and grateful for the opportunities that he has been given always looking ahead and never behind. I don't like to remember 
the jobs that I did in the past and use them as a benchmark to success. I thank God for past successes. I'm looking forward to future successes and, you know, how we can continue to grow. It would be unfair to pick out one particular job and say that this was the job that that happened. I feel that it was a culmination of a lot of things. You understand? And there were a lot of people that were involved. You understand? So um, I'm grateful to God for the people that trusted us when we were nobodies and people that still trust us. Um, now, but my most important job is the one I'm about to do in an hour's time. <laughs> Big H, as he's fondly called by family, friends and clients alike, has gone from not knowing what to expect to becoming one of the major players in the industry. Now en route to becoming a household name, the sky is only the beginning for him. Now this is where we draw the curtains on this week's edition of Business 24, your weekly magazine program. Please do remember we value your inputs to help us serve you better. So keep the mails coming and we'll sure get back to you appropriately. Once again, this is Business 24. Many thanks for your time. Until we come your way again next week. Bye.